Morning, this is Troy from the do-it-yourself world and the off-grid project. It was cold, cold last night. It was six degrees last night at midnight, or around 11 o'clock. It was six degrees. And today we have heavy winds with gusts up to 40 miles an hour. So I'm really keeping an eye on the solar panels. That worries me there. They've withstood a lot, though. And my, my storage tents and canopy... But the uh, the chickens are fine. They made it through all right, and that's the coldest I've seen yet since I've had these birds. I don't know what last year was like because I wasn't here, but it was cold last night, really cold and windy. And all the chickens are fine. I had put up some more protection and shelter for them to keep the wind out, and every single one, even the tiny bantams, are alive and well. I'm running low on water. It's hard because I have to hand cart. The, the truck brakes are leaking and I, my patch kit isn't working because it's too cold. Which is annoying. And uh, it's the coiled spring wire which means I'd have to buy an extra extra long wire. It's about probably uh, six, eight foot long. And I'd have to coil it myself. So I tried patching it and uh, it didn't take because it's too cold. So I'm hand carting jugs of water. We have wind chill warnings today. Uh, minus 25 degrees below Fahrenheit wind chill. Uh, warnings popping up on my cell phone on the weather channel continuously. So it's cold out there. It's the coldest I've seen yet. In, uh, well, in a few years actually. With that wind chill factor. We've had pretty mild winters so far and been pretty lucky, I think. Now, to the batteries. I had the forklift batteries on charge last night. And they are, um, this morning they were at 12.2 volts, which they are sulfated. So now these are the forklift batteries. So everybody that was sick of hearing about the golf cart batteries, that day is done. The golf cart batteries are disconnected completely. These are the forklift batteries. Now, they are sitting at 12.9 volts. My computer is on, and my modem is on. And I have 45 watts of charge coming in from the solar panels. I'm going to go out and see if I need to sweep them off. I might be able to improve that a bit. It is going to get cloudy today, and we're going to get more snow, so I'm going to enjoy what I've got coming in while I have it. Now, these batteries do show a very high voltage under some very little charge. So there's only 4 amps, less than 4 amps coming in. They are sulfated, so they are, see it's showing absorption mode. The um, batteries really aren't taking a lot of charge right now, so they, they are going to need to be desulfated. The good news is my new, or used, I should say, reconditioned forklift battery bank is on its way. It will be delivered today, and... I will be working with, well, it's going to take me time to disassemble that beast. It's 700 pounds, the guy said. So I'll have some issues moving it. So I will be running on this forklift set for a few days, probably, until I can get that big, newer one over here. It does come with a guarantee, he said, even if I modify it to use on my tiny house. So it's on its way. That's exciting good news. One thing I have to say, I've been burning a lot more wood with uh, 20 to 45, between 20 and 40 mile an hour winds, and the insulation I never finished upstairs because I was, uh, I had 100 degree temperatures upstairs all the time, so I never insulated yet. Now that it's deeply cold and strong winds, I am burning more wood, a lot more than I had before. I also think that the BTUs of that tree that I cut down are not as much. I noticed a serious difference in the, the amount of heat coming off that tree. It's way, way less than anything I've burnt so far. And uh, I'm, I'm not impressed with the amount of heat coming off that wood. It burns up faster and it doesn't give as much warmth. So I'm burning through it faster. That's another factor. In, in how much wood I'm using. So I'll be going out again in the next day or so and cutting another dead standing tree down to bring up to the tiny house 
winter is here in full force and we do have cold 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 weather now and I'm gonna start burning some serious amounts of firewood out here now because the batteries the forklift batteries are sulfated from resting so long I set the TriStar MPPT charge controller to manually equalize. I um, manually put it into equalize mode which puts it at 15.6 volts at 10 amps for an extended period and that will boil off the um, that will cause boiling in the in the um, batteries and help to break up the sulfation in the plates. Now why did it just kick back out? Hmm. That's odd. It just kicked off. It shouldn't do that. I hope it goes back in. I might have to kick it back. Well, no, it's still at 15.4 volts, so it's doing whatever it has to do. It might be just that a uh, cloud passed over or something. But I'll let that do its job and boil off the the uh, sulfation on the plates, and that mixes the acid in better. By putting in a higher voltage like this, it mixes the acid. The acid tends to separate from the water, and then you don't have equal charging in the cells, which equals reduced battery capacity. So, anyway, this is a really nice charge controller, and uh, the option to manually equalize whenever you want or set it on auto is nice to have. I'm at 16.2 volts equalizing, 200 watts coming in, which is nice for this time of year. Let's go outside and see if the batteries are boiling a bit. Well, I don't see anything. Oh, by the way, there's a um, charger that was on clearance at Tractor Supply that I uh, grabbed. It is, It has manual mode, and that's what I was using yesterday, actually. It was on clearance. It was one of the Christmas gifts that they put on deep, deep discount, so I grabbed it. And it works. I had the batteries charging up nicely last night. Well, I don't see any boiling. Um, should be able to actually see bubbling going on. Even though the, uh, the cases are only semi-transparent, you should be able to see some bubbling. I don't see any bubbling going on right now. Make sure the cells are still cold. Cold to the touch. Means they're not overheating or anything. Well, I'll let them keep going. Let that uh, charge controller do its job. Well, we're at 16 volts, 160 watts, and equalizing. Very good. I hope it keeps going all day and, uh, well, as long as this thing is programmed to do, boil those batteries. I know it's all about the batteries recently, but, uh, when you're off the grid, it's all about the batteries. Seriously, in winter, it's all about the batteries when you're living off the grid. I'm trying to show you how it is. I hold nothing back, I show my mistakes, and I show my successes, and I show happy times when your batteries are boiling. 16.1 volts, 19 degrees on the batteries, cold. Well it's partly sunny, um, partly sunny at best, but it is giving me some power in the uh, tiny house battery bank, the old uh, forklift batteries. We are still in equalized mode at 16.2 volts and 200 watts coming in. That's 12.9 amps, almost 13 amps. That's very, very good. That's actually the most I've seen in a long time coming in here. So, and it's now, what time is it? One o'clock in the afternoon. So these have been equalizing for a couple hours now. So it's good. Very good. Hopefully it'll do them some good and improve those old forklift batteries. Meantime, the reconditioned battery bank is on its way. Should arrive any time now. He had said 12 o'clock he'd arrive, but I figured 1 or 2. So we'll see. He's coming from the farthest point of Long Island. Should be a good 3 hour drive, I'm figuring. Even with no traffic. So I'm expecting a phone call at any minute now. Got a gigantic box. Baby's excited. There's a box. Oh, 
Baby loves a box. No matter the size, it's funny. It's green. Oh, what is it? It's in there tight. Uh, huh? Interesting. It's a Ryobi. It's heavy. Wow, that base is heavy. What? What do we got here? Give me a minute. Huh. This is a Ryobi cultivator. And it's got a heavy base. Wow. And, and uh, two, okay, I see. That's what confuses me. It's got two cultivator heads. And an extra support handle. This is a heavy, heavy beast. The, the end, the motor on this is incredibly heavy. I can't believe it. Look at that. So this is good for after you've tilled. That's good for working around the uh, around the base of the or in the, in the between the plants. Well, that'll be fun to try out this. Uh, spring I have no idea who sent this there's no message no note no nothing so whoever sent this thank you I love Ryobi I should be actually I should contact Ryobi I market these guys so much it's unbelievable and a baby's got a mansion that's a baby cat mansion now well whoever sent this this is awesome whoops there's a baby doing what she does best now you got me wanting to wait to uh Anxious for spring to try this beast out. That is heavy. The base, the engine head of this is just really, really heavy. Wow. And uh, I saw in the instructions it's telescopic, so you, you can extend the length of <laughs> the baby. <coughs> the baby cat's got a mansion to play in. That's funny. Well, this is quite a tool. Um, please, if you want to be known, come on in the comments and say hi and thank you. Well, I had to put it together right away. I want to give it a try out. But, boy, that's. It feels like it's a good tool. It's ruggedly built. Definitely feels solid. I had to use needle nose pliers to get the pins in there. That was awkward. But, I got it. It's a good uh, weed cutter for between the rows. Looks good. Feels heavy. Solid. Not sure what I expected, but it's an interesting action on this. It's a, uh, they rotate back and forth. But it certainly feels like it's going to have some power. I'll have to wait till spring to try it though. But it really feels strong. So that's why it's so heavy. It's full of gears and everything. Well, it's definitely a heavy tool. Let's see what happens in spring. Boy, don't blink around here. Weather changes faster than you can blink your eyes. Boy. Um, it was just sunny and beautiful a minute ago. That's weird. Seriously. I, I looked down. Um, my internet went out for a second. I looked over to see what's up with the internet. I looked back up and it's snowing. That is so weird. And that is a shock. 
<laughs> I didn't see that coming. Not by a long way. Well, I sure hope it doesn't uh, mess up the delivery of the big battery because they're bringing a two-wheel drive van. And uh, this is snow on top of ice, which is just getting worse and worse and worse. And I still haven't got my brake lines fixed because it's everything's frozen and nothing's really working properly out here. So, uh, hope we get it in here. I sure hope they can bring it. Okay, if I didn't have a camera, I would think I was hallucinating. This is just mere minutes later. Very funny. Look at that. Not a cloud in the sky. Clear and pretty. You saw it, right? It was dark. It was snowing heavily. Just funny. Sorry, I'm amazed at life and the little things that most people take for granted. I get excited about a little bit of snow and the weather changing so rapidly. This is Troy from the Do It Yourself Road and the Off Grid Project. You can see some extra tire tracks here in the yard. The van is just pulling away. The delivery guys came and left. And I got a battery. I got a beautiful 700 and uh, some odd amp hour battery. It's a 125, what was it again? A 125-13. I'm going to have to look it up. But uh, it's a beauty. Reconditioned. It's only three years old. This was only three years old. And then they were kind enough to hook me up. There's the, uh, the original connector. I didn't really want to rip that apart. And they had an oldie in there that they cut and they put the ring terminals on it for me. So all I got to do is wire this up to my uh, tiny house and wheels, isolate it and separate it in um, breakout boxes, plug it in, done. Put in the plug and I'm done. Look at that. That is awesome. That is hooked up. The guys are really good, really kind, and uh, it was easy with this, my chain hoist from uh, Harbor Freight. We just slid it up in the back of the van, cranked it up, drove the van away, and put it down on the ground. Done. Easy, easy job. So the Harbor Freight engine hoist, or a cherry picker as some call it, paid for itself already and just getting me this battery. So thanks again, uh, Techman1219, for making this possible. And uh, thanks to the battery guys. I'll probably be, uh, definitely I'll be keeping in touch with those guys in the future. And uh, we were talking about me going down and doing some video with them someday on uh, forklift batteries. It'll be pretty interesting, I think. Well, I'm going to go in and warm up. It was, uh, we've been out here for an hour in minus 25 degree wind chills, and it is brutally cold. Well, another day coming to a close. I was running around like a madman today, but I sadly did not have the camera with me. The battery wouldn't have lasted much anyway. I reinforced the chicken coop, the chicken tractor, a lot more to protect it from the winds and give them more shelter from the cold tonight. It's going to be down around zero, and the wind chills today were minus 25 Fahrenheit already. So it was pretty brutal. I'm inside right now thawing my kneecaps because they feel like ice cubes. I was out there just for 30 minutes at a time working on the chicken coop and working on the um, around the yard. I've hauled in four gallons of water. That's two separate trips. So I've walked an entire mile carrying uh, water jugs, hauling the water from up up by the house. And uh, the chickens, I keep giving the chickens water. I, I keep it inside and then I'll take it out and give them fresh water because everything freezes when it hits the ground. It's pretty bad. I also have put a gallon and a half of water into the air in the tiny house today. With the cold being more intense outside, I'm burning more wood inside, which reduces the humidity more, which boils off more water. So that was a lot. And I'm drinking a lot of tea to keep myself warm. So that's, that's taken up a lot of water. So I've gone through four gallons of water today, which is quite impressive. Um, pretty surprising. 
Now I've got to go out and get the generator gassed up and oiled up and ready to go. The old forklift batteries are down to 12.2 volts. Now after all is said and done, they're still not topped off, even though I had them on equalized today. But I don't expect they're going to be perfectly good overnight. That's not going to be an easy job. So I'm not stressed about that. I'll run the Harbor Freight generator with the manual battery charger as long as I'm working indoors and uh, it'll be fine. That'll be perfectly fine. Now I've got the new battery bank, the new forklift battery bank, which I'll be bringing over soon and that'll seriously improve things. But I'm going to have to use my truck for that. I've got an idea. I'm going to raise it up off the ground. That's sitting over there. I'm going to raise it off the ground with the engine hoist and then I'm going to back the truck up to it get it under the bed of the truck, strap it down so it doesn't fall because it's very narrow and then I'm going to drive the truck over to the behind the tiny house on wheels so I'm going to back the truck right up through here and get it as close as I can to the back of the house and then I'll bring the engine hoist over and lift it out of the truck, drive the truck away lower the battery onto the ground as close as I can get it. Now there are, I guess at Harbor Freight you can get some hand trucks with, uh, they can handle 600 to 1000 pounds and have big wheels. So I'm going to have to get a big wheeled rolling cart that can handle that weight of that battery bank. And then I can wheel it over into place, then use the engine hoist to lift it off the cart, try to position it where I want it, and then drop it. Now it's going to be a job. It's going to definitely going to be a serious job, especially with the cold like it is, because you can't be out too long at one time. It just the wind is blasting through your clothing. Um, they actually have warnings um, to stay inside, but you know you got to work. So that's what I was doing today when I wasn't. I was running around without the camera in my hand. Forgive me. The guys didn't want to be recorded here and now, which is understandable. But I'll probably go visit them at the warehouse one day. The battery guys. That'll make a good video. So, I'm going to go out and get the generator running and batten down the hatches for the night out here and make sure everything's tied down.